Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. So today marks one year and one month ownership with my 2020 Ram. So I feel like now might be the appropriate time to do a one year review on this truck. This is why I don't enjoy parking either of my trucks. Oh gosh, don't touch the blue jeans. <laughs> either of my two trucks in the garage with the Z parked here as well. In all fairness, I could probably park the Z a little bit closer to the wall this way. Also, we still need to install the running boards on the Silverado. It did rain a lot last night, so the truck is nice and dirty. A truck wash is soon to come. I usually don't park either of my trucks in the garage for the simple sake that it sucks <laughs> out of the garage. I have one goal, don't hit the Z that you can't see. Oh my gosh, keep it straight, keep it straight. And we're good. So welcome to my first review on really actually anything. So here's my 2020 Ram Laramie 5.7 liter Hemi. It's a two wheel drive. I bought this thing exactly a year and a week ago. So I bought it in March of 2020. We'll drive it in a minute, but I'll start by saying this is a very easy truck to drive for a full size truck, even though it's not the biggest full size truck on the road. Very easy to maneuver. It's very easy to see everything. There's not a lot of blind spots on this thing. Overall, very easy. Those who have never driven a full size truck before who have driven this truck, say the same thing. It is a very easy truck to drive. For those who are new to the channel and new to the Ram world in general, I should probably start by saying that this is nowhere near stock. This truck is wrapped in satin battleship gray. It does have a three and a half inch lift kit on it, which is three and a half inches in the front and two inches in the rear. It's also sitting on 35 inch tires with 20 inch wheels. That generally makes for one, laggy performance and lack of fuel efficiency as well as the aftermarket exhaust, which can either increase or decrease the power and fuel economy as well. We have a spacer up top right there, as well as in the rear. So everything is pretty much still factory as far as the ride quality goes. Everything is just kind of pushed down and there is a upper control arm. This is a ready lift lift kit. It is the three and a half inch SST kit and it rides the same exact way as the day I bought it. So let's talk about a couple of the options I have on this truck. Now this is the Laramie. Anything after the Tradesman, which is AKA the work truck version of this truck, it's like the very entry level you can get. Anything past that point, which is the Bighorn, then it goes Laramie. So this is basically the third step up as far as trim levels. You can start optioning things like the cargo ram box right here on the side which is absolutely amazing this is so worth the thousand dollars it's called the ram box right in here you have some drain plugs so this can be the ultimate tailgater it can be used for long road trips you want to put some ice in there and put some perishables up in here you can do that and drain it all out the bottom you can throw some fresh fish in there after a day of fishing it also has a 115 volt right there at 400 watts so this thing is the ultimate work box or tailgater. And it is on both sides, so with that being said, it does take away from the inside of the bed a little bit, obviously from side to side. It's not gonna be as wide, but from the bulkhead to the tailgate, it is five feet and seven inches. I'm not too entirely sure how wide it is from left to right, but we do have measuring tapes, so let's find out. So it's roughly 50 inches, which is four feet, two inches. This thing is like dumb light. Look at that, one finger, boom. No one waves. It also has the tow package. This thing tows just under 13,000 pounds. I also forgot to mention that there is lights in the Ram box as well, which is really cool. And they do illuminate quite a bit up in here. So on this side, same deal, except we don't have the 115 volt here on the side. That is only on the driver's side. Well, it just started absolutely pouring. So we're gonna chill inside the truck. Hopefully this passes in the next five or 10 minutes. But in the meantime, let's talk about the interior. All right, so welcome to the cockpit. First and foremost, we have this beautifully wrapped in leather steering wheel, which is really nice. It's also heated, which is really cool as well. Unfortunately, unlike GM, the button is not on the steering wheel. To activate that, it's actually controlled through the screen here. So I opted for the 12 inch Uconnect system here. This thing was worth every bit of the $2,000 option I paid for this. This thing was mandatory for me. This was a huge selling point for me when buying this truck. This thing is just beautiful. I love it. It's super vibrant. The graphics are really nice and pretty much all of what goes on in this truck is controlled through settings beyond this screen right here. But my only complaint with this is when you're driving, the majority of what you need to do is there on the bottom, which is pretty far out of your line of sight while you're just cruising down the road. So if you want, say, your heated seats activated or the cooled seats or the heated steering wheel, all that is controlled through the bottom buttons down there. So 
you have to go and click on the controls, then figure out from there where you need to go, and that can be very distracting while you're driving. So this is ideal for when you are stationary, but yeah, that's probably my only complaint. Otherwise, this thing is absolutely amazing. The graphics are perfect, and that backup camera, check this out. Backup camera is on another level. I don't think any manufacturer is getting anywhere near touching the quality of this backup camera. It's absolutely amazing. It's so clear, even at nighttime, this is by far the, in my opinion, the best backup camera that you can possibly get. Fuel economy, I'm averaging 13 miles per gallon through the city and on the highway. I do about 50, 50, 50% 50 highway, 50% in the city. That is my fuel economy with the wheels and tire setup. I have the 20 inch wheels on the 35 by 12 and a half with the exhaust and the three and a half inch lift kit. I'm averaging 13 miles per gallon with this entire setup. It was a little bit better when I had nothing on the suspension, no wheels, no tires, no lift, but that's still not bad considering what I've done to it. I think this lift is absolutely perfect, by the way. It's not too tall, it's not too low. I still fit in the majority of parking structures, my garage. Styling-wise, I think this truck looks absolutely amazing. Even the day I bought it, here's a photo of the day, well, not the day I bought it, that has some window tint on it and whatnot, but I mean, just like that with some window tint, which is relatively still stock. Those are the stock wheels and tires. But of course, you throw some mods at it and it looks like a whole different animal. Overall, I think the truck looks sick. It's got a lot of aggressive styling points on it, a lot of nice detail. I love these LED headlights and the DRLs up top and bottom with that LED strip right there. I'm an LED fiend. I love LED lights. So right there on the bottom are the turn signals. And then we have a DRL running light right here on top and bottom. Hello, <laughs> no one waves. Why does no one wave? All right, whatever. Anyways, the uh, the LED tail lights back here too are part of that premium lighting package. So we have LEDs in the turns, LEDs on the brakes, the tails, and the reverse lights as well. These things look sick. Aside from the storage I have here on the side of the bedsides, there's also in-floor storage as well called the Ram Bin right here in the bottom of the floor on both sides right there how sick is that it latches closed boom right underneath the floor mats never know it's even there which is great this truck has so much storage look at all that in the doors more right there two in the floor there i have two on the bedsides so those are optional and then hopping inside here on the side we have a bunch of storage here in the doors some cup holders lots of room right there we have little pockets right here, and then in the center console area, it's absolutely massive. So we have this unique kind of sliding cup holder. There's storage here, and then you can slide that back. There's more space down there to put stuff. You can set your cell phone right there, and then you can also plug it right in, just like that. If that wasn't enough, we also have two glove boxes and a little storage spot right here as well with a little 12 volt DC if you guys want to run a dash cam. Heading on back to the back seat, it is absolutely pouring again outside of my cam. Camera's about to blow up, but we have a perfectly flat loading zone back here with hooks underneath the back seats to latch your groceries onto or whatever else you could think to strap onto these guys right here. The average American man is five foot nine, the average American woman is five foot four. I am exactly six feet tall, so we're gonna find out exactly how much room I have back here. But to my knowledge, only on the limiteds you're able to get the rear reclining seats as well as the heated and the cooled function back here as well. How crazy is that for a rear seat in a pickup truck? That is pretty cool. There's also this little cutout right here, perfectly fit for an iPad. So not only did Ram think about the working class, but also the families as well. I mean, this is just awesome for kids in the back seat to have a little place to set their iPads. I mean, come on now, even adults, give me one. I'll play with it. But anywho, yeah, there's a, there's a ton of room back here. Hold on, we have a little strap right here. Whoa, what? Never been opened. Did not know that was here. That's sick. Look at that. We're back here chilling VIP style, what? I low key never knew that was back here. So we have two cup holders here in the center, two more up front center, dude. I genuinely feel like you can pick up one of your VIP clients in the back seat of this truck. It is just so comfortable and roomy. Wow, and nice to look at. Like there's so much good detail in here, like the stitching and the leather right here. Just real nice materials everywhere you look. This is where Ram truly shines is their interiors. They stepped up the interior game to a whole different level that no other truck in its class is getting anywhere near. The Ram's interior is, is just, it's incomparable. It's second to none. Back in the cockpit, one thing you'll notice is a rotary gear selector. I know this thing is weird. It's, it's a strange concept to change the gears with a knob. 
but once you get used to it, it just becomes so easy and effortless to switch gears. At first it was really strange and I kind of hated it, but now I enjoy it. So my first impressions when test driving this truck is it's super smooth and very quiet. It's not that quiet anymore because I have a Magnaflow catback exhaust on it, but I mean, it's not that loud still. Even when you're going through rough terrains and off-road, it's still super smooth. It just absorbs all that shock beautifully. So I traded in my 2019 Silverado with a 323 in the rear. This one has the 392. I put 34 inch tires in that one. This one has 35s and this thing pulls like a beast. Now I know a lot of that has to do with the rate, the ratio and the gearing, but also this is a much more powerful motor. This thing is pushing, I think somewhere around 50 more horsepower than my 2019 Silverado LT. I never drove the 6.2, so there might be a little more of a fight there, but comparing what I had to this, game over. The steering was a little more responsive on the Silverado. So GM's probably a little ahead of the game on the steering. This is still great. It's still, it's still very responsive, but steering's a little bit tighter in the Silverado. If you guys ever plan on towing or putting bigger wheels and tires on your Ram, definitely, definitely get the 392. It is so worth it. I feel like this truck doesn't even know there's 35s on it. It's just effortless to drive this thing on this tire setup. So definitely worth the $95 option. If you guys want to add that later on, it becomes a very expensive addition to your truck because all the labor. So yeah, pay attention to that if you plan on getting bigger wheels and tires. So I don't have lane keep assist or adaptive cruise control because I don't really trust the computer with my life, basically. I don't care what car it's in but I do have blind spot detection. So for example, there's this car right here. If I turn my right signal on, it'll beep telling me he's in my blind spot. And that orange thing in the mirror lights up as well. still pretty stoked on my purchase of my 2020 Ram Laramie. It's very powerful, it's very luxurious, it's very sporty, it's very practical, it's so roomy, and it's been very reliable as well. I've had like two small issues with it. I'll have a video to that linked in the description below as well. Rain is definitely on its way back, so I gotta bounce. I will catch you guys on the next one. Till then, peace out. <laughs>